Hi, welcome to Marvin of Physics Lab. In today's video, we'll be talking about WAS 2021 Physics Practica, and our focus will be on question number two, which has to do with optics in physics. Let's start with the apparatus that will be given to you. You'll be provided with a ray box with illuminated object. You'll be provided with a convex lens whose focal length is 15 centimeter. You'll be provided with a screen, then you'll be given a meter rule, and finally, a lens holder. I will show you how they look like uh, later. So the question now is, what, what, what are likely questions that will be given to you based on this apparatus? Please note that the exact question will be made known to you on the day of the exam but we can deduce the, the kind of question you should, you should expect based on the apparatus given to you. There are three likely questions that can be extracted from this. There are three common questions that WIAC generally asks based on this, this apparatus given to you. So we are going to explore those three possible questions in our videos, but those videos will be in part. So watch out for our uh, subsequent part. So in this first part, we'll cover a, a part, a, a section of our discussion. Then subsequent parts that we'll be releasing, we'll talk about the rest. So let's take a look at the three likely questions that can be set based on this apparatus. Here are the three likely questions based on the apparatus given to you. The first could aim at determining the focal length of a convex lens using lens formula method. Why in 1991 asked a question based on this objective. The second is to determine the focal length of a converging lens by measuring object distance and magnification. In 2014, Y sets the optics question based on this objective. The third but likely question is to determine the focal length of a converging lens based on the lens displacement method. And in 2000 and in 2008, YX sets their optics question based on this objective. So we're gonna, we're gonna explore these three options or potential likely questions and we will have them in part. So do watch out for other parts of this video. Today's video will be focused on the first method, which is to determine the focal length of a lens using lens formula method. So we're going to use the procedure that was set by WIAC in 1991. So let's take a look at that method. Let's take a look at the first likely question using Marvin of Physics Lab. You can download the, the software from our website. You can check our description to, to, to see a link to our website where you can download uh, a, a virtual physics lab where you can carry out various physics experiments. So let's take a look at the first experiment. So we are going to go to optics, then let's look at the first one, which has to do with convex lens. So this is the first likely question you, 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 you might be asked on the day of the exam. And the objective in this particular experiment is to determine the focal length of convex lens using the lens formula method. And if you check the apparatus very closely, you will realize that the apparatus are exactly the same as that um, recommended or provided to you by WIAG. So let's take a look at the experimental setup. So here is the experimental setup. You, you've got a ray box, a ray box with uh, an object in front of it. So the object could be anything that can be illuminated. So the, the one why I expect you to have is the one with a cross, like a cross here with a cross that, that can be illuminated. But in this case, 
we decided to, uh, in this case, in, in, in a simulator, we have, uh, instead of a crosshair, we have a kind of a keyhole representing the crosshair. Then you have your lens holder. The lens holder actually holds, uh, suspends the lens. So that's essentially what it does. Then you've got your screen. A screen is, is, uh, is like a, is, is a wooden object with a white surface, with, with a surface painted white, so that the, the image formed by the convex lens can, can reflect or actually be seen on the screen. So that's basically what the screen is all about. Then you, then you can have your, your, your bench or your, your, your lab decks or wherever you want to place the entire, entire setup on. Okay, so we've got the, the ray from. The ray from just shows you what you will see when you look at the front of the ray box. Then the screen front view shows you the front of the screen. Uh, if you look at the front of the screen, basically. Okay, so let's look at other information that you, you need to know. In this particular experiment, you have got, here, here is the procedure. The first step is to place the ray box on the axis of a thin convex lens on the left side of the lens. Basically, what it means is ensure the, the ray box aligns uh, horizontally with the with the lens so that the, the center of the ray box matches with the center of the convex lens. Then record the distance U between the ray box and the convex lens. So what this means is the distance between the ray box and the convex lens is U. The distance between the convex lens and the screen is V. So let's take a look at the second step. You expect to place the screen, on the, the screen on the right side of the convex lens along the axis of the lens. Then you expect to adjust the position of the screen until a sharp image is seen on the screen. Then you are expected to record it as V. So what this means is once you have your screen on the right side of the lens, you expect to adjust the screen until you can see a sharp image on the screen. So once you see a sharp image on the screen, the image of, of the object that is illuminated by the ray box, once you see it on the screen, a sharp image, you record the distance as U, as V rather, the distance between the convex lens and the screen, you record that as V. So that's what step two is all about. Then step three is to evaluate U and V. Since you now know your U, and you also know your V at this point, just multiply U times V and also add U plus V. So record both. So repeat the experiment, that's step four. Repeat the experiment for other values of U. So what this means is once you, 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 you try, you run this experiment for a particular value of U. So, so let's say U is 10 and you, 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 you got your image on your screen and you've measured the V, the distance between this, the, the convex lens and the screen. Change the value of U from let's say 10 to 20 and so on and so forth. So that's what step five is all about. It's all about changing U and running step one, two, three again. Then once you've done that for several values of U, then you move on to step five, which is to record all your oral readings. Then step six is to plot a graph of U plus V on vertical axis against U, V on the horizontal axis. Then the last step is to determine the slope of the graph. Okay, we are going to talk about uh, the logic or let's say the principle of this experiment, but let's first take a look at the precautions. This precaution should be noted because in every experiment, the, you'll be asked to state some precautions. So just note that you'll be asked to state precautions and these two precautions should be noted. The first one is to ensure that a sharp image is obtained before taking readings. If a sharp image is not obtained, your reading will be wrong. And ultimately your slope and graph, your graph and slope will also be wrong. So ensure that you've got a sharp image. That is an image that is the sharpest after adjusting your screen before 
taking the value of V. Then the second precaution is to ensure that error due to parallax is avoided when reading from meta root. Since you'll be reading the value of U and the value of V with a meta root, it's very important you observe error due to parallax or you, you avoid it rather. You, you avoid it by making sure your eyes is in parallel is parallel to the, the, the point you want to read so that you don't make slight errors when taking readings from the meta root. So another thing you need to note is when reporting your precaution, don't report it exactly like this. Because if you are reporting a precaution, you are meant to use, you are meant to personalize it. Like I ensured, for example, you say I ensured a sharp image was obtained before taking readings. Then you can also say, I ensure that error due to parallax was avoided when reading from Mitaru. So now let's talk about the principles. Why it's important you know the principle is, this will help you know whether you are doing the right thing or not. So how do you tell if eventually your reading and your um, graph or whatever it's right knowing the principle behind this experiment will help you know whether what you've done at the end of the experiment is, is is sensible or not so i'm going to talk about the principle now so let's talk about the principle the first thing you need to note is your table of reading will be in this form you've got u you've got v then you have uv, then you have u plus v. So, the basic idea behind this experiment is this. It, it is from the length equation, which is this. 1 over f is equal to 1 over u plus 1 over v. F is the focal length of the lens. U is the object distance. And V is the image distance. Let's try combining 1 over v plus 1 over u. So this will give us the, you, you're going to have uv here. You're going to have v plus u. Then you can also write it this way, u plus v over uv. So let's try to cross multiply this with this and this with this. So I want to get something like F into brackets U plus V equals U V. If you make U plus V the subject, so I want to get U V over F. So this is very important. Now that you've got this equation, this is the equation of the graph you will eventually plot. Because from the question, we were told that we should plot u plus v against uv. So you're going to have something like this. But the question is, what would be the slope of the graph that you will get eventually? The slope of the graph with the slope of the graph is expected to be 1 over f because 1 over f is the coefficient of this uv. In the equation of a line generally is given as the equation of a line is given as y equals mx plus c where n is the slope. So in this case we can say our y is u plus v. And we can say our x is uv. So our slope, therefore, is 1 over f. Okay, so 
it means whatever you get as your slope at the end of your experiment should be very close to 1 over f. Okay, so this means slope is equal to 1 over f. And since we know that f is 15, why well, said the focal length I'll be giving to you will be 15. So you expect your slope to be 1 over 15. And that is roughly equal to 0 0.0667. So this means your slope should be roughly equal to this. Then another thing you should note is that since we know that the equation of a line is given us y equals to mx plus c, c is y intercept. So what that means is, is the point on the graph where this line touches the y axis. So in our own case, we've got u plus b equals u b divided by f. Now, since we don't have any other constant, we can assume that the c is zero. So this means that the your line, that is the graph you're going to get, should pass through the origin of, of, of your graph. So you shouldn't go through any other point. You should go through the origin because the y-intercept is zero. The y-intercept is zero. So, so that's the principle behind this experiment. So in summary, your slope should be roughly 0 0.0667 and your y-intercept should be zero. It should go through the origin. In the second part of this video, we will talk about how to carry out the experiments and we will also show you how to plot graph and answer some likely questions based on the experimental setup.